This is Category 5 Technology TV. What say we uh, talk about some data redundancy at this point? Because, you know, I get a lot of people asking me, you know, well, what's, you know, you've been talking about data redundancy. Why don't you just... Yeah, haven't we already done that? Our, our, well, we're working our, on our this. we got to find the solution. <laughs> and the reason I want to do it this way is because if you're having a similar, you know, hmm, what do I choose, I want you to be able to see, you know, the, the process in which we're making this decision. But I get the question, why don't you just do off-site backup? And to that, I just want to say that it's not the same thing. What we're talking about is not a backup solution. What we're talking about with redundant data storage is redundancy. And what that usually means is no downtime. And this is where RAID 5, we had a discussion about, you know, do we go with three disks or four disks? It has to do with, do we want just the redundancy or do we want no downtime? So the idea is, is that you can save your files onto this array of disks. So there's multiple hard drives. And if one of those hard drives crashes, you've got the ability to keep working, replace that hard drive on the fly, and keep working, not have to have any downtime, not have to, you know, if I come on a Tuesday morning and, and one of the hard drives is crashed, does it mean that I'm not going to be able to do the show that night because we've got to, you know, do this or that? With a three drive RAID 5, that would be the case. Um, so what we want to do is come up with a solution so that if something like that were to ever happen, we can just keep working, just keep going. And this is very important to have redundancy plus backup, but we're not addressing the backup situation at this point. We just want to have redundancy. So when I save a file, there's a few different types of redundancy. There's mirroring, or a RAID 1, we would call it, uh, where if I save a file, it actually saves it on two disks. So if one fails, we can just replace that one, but the other one, the second one, keeps working, and we can keep going. And that's the kind where you know a server will have two drives in it, and they can keep working after a hard drive fails. They don't have to turn anything off or do anything. It's nice. So, but in our case, we want to take it one step further and say we, we don't just want the redundancy. We don't just want the ability to keep working if a hard drive fails. We want the ability to keep adding hard drives if we want. Or, you know, once we get to a threshold of, say, six drives, we want to be able to take out the smallest drive and put in a bigger one. And it would make the array bigger. So then we would have more storage but still have the redundancy. So that's what we're going for here. It's an on site storage solution, it's not a backup solution. It's somewhere to save our shows, somewhere to save our files, and that's what's important to us right now. Uh, Linux Webfly is asking how to, uh, if I can show how to install Ubuntu on a RAID 0, and it's very hopeful. And to that I'll say I will never show you how to do a RAID 0. Is that, is that okay for me to say? It's a very, very dangerous thing. My brother has a RAID 0 in his system. It drives me nuts, because there's no redundancy. All it is is two drives. It's like, you know, connected together in such a way that it becomes the capacity of both drives combined, essentially. It's a lot faster than a single drive, but no redundancy. Hmm. So if one of those drives crashes, you lose all the data on that drive. Hmm. Not a good situation. That's something we want to completely avoid. So, and people are asking about all different RAID levels, and I don't, I don't really want to get into, like, there's so many different types of RAID, and there's things that call themselves RAID, that, and, and RAID 0 is really uh, one of those that it's really not a RAID when you think about it, because RAID being a, a redundant array of inexpensive disks, and RAID 0 being not redundant at all, it's not, uh, it's not technically. But I don't want to get into too many of those kinds of things because those aren't the solutions that we're looking at and the, that are appropriate for what we're doing. So, so what, what I'm thinking, I've looked around. We looked at, uh, somebody mentioned NAS Lite uh, a couple weeks ago in an email. And so I looked at it, and it looks like a nice NAS solution, but it's, it costs money. So immediately you've got to okay say, okay, is it worth the money? It's a NAS solution only. It does have the ability to, pardon me, use RAID uh, if you have a hardware RAID controller. It has no software RAID, uh, and it requires you to have that physical hardware. So it would basically be the same as using FreeNAS, which doesn't cost anything and doesn't give us any of the ability to increase the size by adding more drives of different capacities, and that's really what we're going for. So once again, UnRAID looks like it's going to be the only viable solution. I mean, we can get into some different Linux-based uh, software solutions. 
DOS Bomber mentioning that they use a Drobo, and that's nice, but it is costly as far as the hardware goes. We're trying to do this with existing hardware if we can. And that's kind of where uh, all this kind of stuff comes in. If you just have a look at what I've got here, um, this chassis has been sitting for quite some time. So this is something that I have. And y you can see that it holds two hard drives up at the top here, and then another three hard drives down at the bottom here. So immediately out of the box, we have hard drive space for five hard drives. Plus, there's a cooling fan that's drawing cool air from the outside in to, dr to blow over top of the drives. So it's going to come out this way, keeping these drives a little bit cooler. So what I'm thinking is, is that here's an opportunity for us. I should probably, there we go. Here's an opportunity with a chassis that we already have in stock to be able to throw those drives in with Unraid and for relatively inexpensive, because the hardware is all stuff that we have, we'd pay $120 for the software if we want more than three drives. But we'd have the ability, here's the thing, I, I've said it before where I've got all different capacity drives. So if I have, and we, get this, we just added a 750 gig drive to the, to the mix, so because uh, we just got a 750 gig empty Seagate drive. So we want to throw that in as probably the, like the parity drive and then have all the different drives uh, kind of adding capacity to the array. People mentioning about LVM2, and these are some different things that we could talk about too. DOS Bomber, impressed with my sports overlay. <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, if anybody has any thoughts about the direction that we should take, here's, here's what I look at, and this is why things like NASLite are not going to work for us. We're looking for redundancy. We're looking for the ability to keep running when a hard drive crashes, and it only has to be one hard drive. If it's going to be more than that, then you know I hope that that never happens. But really, realistically, if if we lose one hard drive, then that's going to be our hopeful worst case scenario, and that's why we're going to limit it to about six drives. Because if we go over that, if you you can build an array that has 20 drives in it, but then all of a sudden you've greatly increased your chance of having more than one hard drive fail. So that's where things can get really really risky in an array as well. So in this case, we're going to go maybe with the highest of six drives. In this chassis, because it holds five right out of the box, we don't need to buy uh, any kind of cage or anything for hard drives at, at the get-go. We should be able to get, get started with just throwing an old motherboard in there. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please email me live at category5.tv. Just kind of tossing my thoughts out there. And, and we have a, a thought from VK7HSC. <laughs> Uh, I think the path you're heading down is the best for both budget and functionality. I kind of feel that way. And uh, we've heard from a couple of viewers who have, who have already jumped into Unraid and having heard a little bit about it as we're making these decisions and trying it out, and, and they've been quite satisfied with it. Being a commercial product, though, you don't get the same amount of community as something that, you know, like free NAS where you know there's a massive amount of people who use it because it's free and it's it's open source and it's supported by the community and all this but it doesn't do what we want with adding drives sorry here's the next point is that we want our drives that are varying capacities to be able to utilize the capacity of each of those drives so if i have an 80 gig drive and i throw in a 120 gig i'm able to use that 120 gig drive it doesn't cap it at 80 like a like a traditional raid array would